fourth down. Mikna back to throw. He's looking. He fires for the end zone. Caught over the wall. Did he hang on? Touchdown, Sabercats. What a grab there. And it was Rod Harper again. Mikna, plenty of time. Looking deep downfield. He's got it! Touchdown, Sabercats! Welcome to Sabercats Weekly here on Comcast Sportsnet. I'm Chris Townsend. The Sabercats got their second straight road victory down in Los Angeles this past week. And coming up next, we'll go over the highlights with the head coach, Darren Arbett. We'll also meet one of the most interesting guys in the league, offensive lineman George Bussey. That's all coming up next right here on Sabercats Weekly. My name is Jesse, and this is my first year with the Sabre Kittens. My favorite part about game day is performing on the field and getting the crowd pumped up. Let's go Sabre Cats! The Sabre Kitten of the Week has been brought to you by Norton by Symantec. Now joining us on Sabre Cats Weekly, the head coach and the owner of the Sabre Cats, Darren Arbett. Coach, how did it feel to be back down in L.A. and getting a win again? Feel good to get a win, Chris. Uh, the guys worked really hard last week. They went down to LA and they were very focused and, and got the win. Well, let's go over the highlights and start it out great for you. A nine play drive that ended with a Rod Harper three yard touchdown across the end zone to get you guys on the, on the scoreboard. Harper uh, worked really hard last week on that route and did a nice job fighting and getting open and made a nice catch. And then you come back down and Harper again, we'd see Russ roll out and we'd see that, that athletic ability that Mikna has. He really has good feet in the pocket and great awareness in the pocket and made a nice move there and Harper went down and got the football. Mikna is back to throw, there's a flag down, there's a throw in the end zone, caught, touchdown at Sabercats, Doug Williams with a catch. You had to feel pretty good about your offense, Russ and the offense look pretty sharp. Yes, I was proud of the, the whole team, Chris, actually, but yeah, Russ and Doug, they did a nice job hooking up and They've been working really hard in practice as well as after practice trying to work on that chemistry. And maybe the catch of the night, Rod Harper, I mean, this catch was fabulous. He fought really hard to get open down in the red zone in the Arena League. I mean, they're, they're, really put, they're putting their hands on you and you really have to fight. And he ran that back line and did a nice job going up and getting the football. And then your defense would hold, they'd run out of time. That would make it 27 to 18. How were you feeling at half? No, you have a lead, but... The guys were playing hard. There was a lot of things that we needed to correct. We talked about those things, and the guys came out. I thought they played a good second half. To Raderink, he's going to fire for the end zone, and it is oh. intercepted by Cleveland Thomas at the three-yard line. The Sabercats take over, first down. And there's Cleveland Thomas with the interception. The ageless one, Coach, gets his third interception of the year. Yeah, you know, uh, Clee is uh, playing good right now. An interception in the last two games challenged him. He looked it right in the face, and he's really going after it right now. Russ hits Rod Harper for 16 yards across the middle for a touchdown, and he's showing the good footwork, continues with the lefty. Did a nice job all night long in the pocket. Once again, Rod fighting down there, getting open. Nice catch. And Cleveland Thomas, he already has an interception, now a fumble recovery, and another stop for your defense. You know, this team needs Cleveland to play like that. Cleveland needs to play like that game in and game out, and he understands that. Hand off to Odie Armstrong. A second effort. Does he get in? Yes! Touchdown, Sabercats! And the big boy in the next drive, Odie Armstrong. Coach, when he gets going, a one-yard TD making it 41-26. He's tough to bring down. Yeah, we have two good ones. We have Odie Armstrong and J.J. Payne. I like both our fullbacks, and you're right. Odie did a nice job getting into the end zone. And then Castile would have the interception, and you have to love all the turnovers your defense was getting, especially in the second half. They're playing hard, Chris. They're playing aggressive football, and, and that's what we have to do, game in and game out. And they understand that, and they did it, and they did a nice job of creating turnovers. And then how about your defense, though? Fourth and six. Coro almost gets the interception, but the main thing, your defense got the stop. Corey did a nice job on coverage there, and I, I really like the young kid. He's playing hard. He's worked his way into the lineup, 
And, and I think he can be much, much better, and he knows that. And then my favorite play of the game, the bomb to your big lineman, Rich Wranglin. He would go 19 yards. You always love to see when the big guys get in the end zone. Back to throw Mikta to a wide-open man. Five touchdown Sabercats lineman eligible, Rich Wranglin. Was we that said Rich no. Wranglin? That was Rich Wranglin again. He looks very fast. He came smoking wow. out that line. And they yeah, you know, you want to feed the big guys. They're blocking all game. And when Rich gets the ball in his hands, he can really do something with it. And the final in this one, 48-32, to two straight wins. But more importantly, a win on the road. It's always great to get that win on the road. It really is. It's tough to win a football game, period, let alone on the road. And the guys understand that. Wardrobe has been provided by Casera Clothing. I've always wondered, how do you keep the energy up the entire game? Because you're rocking it the entire game. Oh, I just do it. It's just one of those things where I you know, start at the beginning and just keep it going. I've got all, the, all these other people here to feed off their energy, feed off the cat's energy, and I just have a fun time doing it. When you're here, you're in the action, you're a part of it. I've been a season ticket holder since 2005, and I would never, ever give up my seats. We just like watching a 60-yard war out there. They're hitting the walls, they're hitting each other. It's great. I love sports, and uh, indoor football is a lot of fun. Well, it's, it's exciting. It relaxes, you know, after working a whole week, and you come over here, you have a great time. They make an effort to put a good product for all the fans. Sabi, you've been coming since, what, you were 10 years old? Since I was around 10 years old. It's around yeah. 10 years old. Why have you loved this game so much? Um, it's just so, you know, it's, you get to be so much more intimate with the game, and you're right in the action, and, you know, the players put so much heart and passion in the game. You just feel that, and also just, like, the noise and the energy from the crowd is just amazing. The man, the myth, the legend, Sabre, the guy who's on the motorcycle every single game here, the coolest guy at the SAP Center. Why do you love doing this so much? You know, I love being around the people, um, the players. There really isn't anything not to like about it. Game day experience is great, always a good time. Love getting the crowd pumped up. I tell everybody, the people that have never been to a game, that people are curious about the game, that it's very fast, it's very brutal, and it's very high scoring, and it's, it's extremely loud. And how much more fun can you get? And you're just right there. I absolutely love this outfit. This might be the best outfit tonight at the game. And why do you love coming to these games so much with your family? We just have a great time. We have a lot of fun. It's just family and just have fun and watching the Sabercats win. Well, one of the things that everybody loves about coming to Sabercats games is the fact it's family oriented. And we got future San Jose Sabercats fans. Why do you love coming to these games? Because I like this, this stadium and I like the players. And I like the team. Tell us as a parent why this is such good, fun family entertainment. Because they can just enjoy what a game is. There's always something going on, the high scoring, something you wouldn't get to see, but you're not paying the tickets you would for a Niner game or a college game, and you know it's a fun Friday night. Evan, Evan's the future of the Sabercats. Evan, do you love football? Yes. <laughs> it's a microphone, camera. It's, it's the future of our franchise. Um, my part, favorite part is when they do the act because it's fun because they like have a, the bikes yeah. and stuff. How cute is that? What's your favorite part of Sabercats games? So is this the year the Sabercats bring home another championship? I hope so. We've been, looks like we got a good team and we're ready to go. Absolutely, especially because we have a chance of having it here in San Jose. It's not going to be anywhere else but San Jose. Oh yeah, it is. You know it. It's going to be. I feel it right here. I really like this year. I think this year they have a great team and I think they can go all the way. You know what? I think we're heading them out with that direction right now. Yeah, it is. It is. 
We got, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. This week's High School Offensive Player of the Week is number 10 senior quarterback Anthony McBride of the Piedmont Hills Pirates. He completed 19 of 31 passes for 345 yards and five touchdowns. He added another two rushing touchdowns to lead the Pirates to 62-14 win over the Bruins of Santa Clara. This week's High School Defensive Player of the Week is senior fullback and linebacker number 44 Eddie Smith of the Pioneer Mustangs. In a 42-0 blowout of the Gunderson Grizzlies, Smith had six tackles, all solo, two of which were sacks, and added an interception in the Mustang win. This week's High School Ironman Player of the Week is number 24 senior Brandon Boyd. Running back and kick returner for Gilroy High School, Brandon carried the ball 19 times for 250 yards and four touchdowns. Brandon also contributed on kickoffs, returning two kicks for 175 yards and two TDs in the 55-7 slaughter of North County High School. Sabercats High School Players of the Week is brought to you by Dr. Sharma, South Bay Orthopedic and Sports Medicine. This week's defensive player of the game was defensive back Cleve Van Thomas. For the second straight game, the future Hall of Famer recorded one interception, one fumble recovery, and one pass breakup in the win over Los Angeles. The defensive player of the game has been brought to you by Fries.com. Well, we have a treat for you, Sabercat fans. One of the more interesting guys in the league, George Bussey, joins us here. George, thank you for taking the time. No problem, anytime. Two straight wins for you guys. Got to be feeling pretty good coming back home this Saturday against Orlando. It feels all right. We're just taking one game at a time, though, so working on Orlando now. Now, last year we had a little issue with the offensive line. I guess I didn't realize this. I don't pick the guest week to week. And I guess we had not given the offensive line any love. And here Coach Arbet is talking about how great the offensive line is to a point to where we had a rift between this show and the offensive line that there was a boycott. Uh, and I can't remember who ended up breaking the line and, and crossing the barrier. T.J. Watkins broke it. Did he? Yeah. You were the guy that started the boycott against us last year? Uh, boycott is such a harsh word. <laughs> it was just, I made an observation, and nine weeks of the show, you hadn't had an offensive lineman on, so yeah. so if we went, mm, if we didn't get in in nine weeks, I was like, oh, we should not do it for the year then. Yeah, and there's no doubt about it. Uh, blocking for Russ Mikna, what, what have you liked playing with this quarterback for the past two years? Uh, he's very smart, takes care of the ball most of the time. <laughs> but, yeah, he's a good guy. He knows the game well, and you don't have to worry about him holding the ball like some quarterbacks. You know, he gets it out in the right timing. So it's always better for offensive linemen. Yeah, because this game is all about timing. You've got to get it out quick. You can only hold your block so long. I can hold it long enough, but. <laughs> but, but there is a point. Yes, there's always a point. How would you feel for Rich, Rich Wrangling, getting that big 19-yard touchdown? He also had three catches last uh, week. I'm excited for Rich. He did a great job catching the ball. Got some yards after contact. Now, anytime a lineman does well, I, I get happy. Are we ever going to see the ball in your hands this season? Uh, the position I play, I I'm know, not eligible, but, but we never know what might happen. Because you guys just flip it's a long season. Yeah. Uh, right now, never know, but it might come later on. Now, if you do get the ball, you're going to be able to take it to the house. 100%. Like, is, I'm scoring. <laughs> There's no doubt? No doubt. <laughs> you had some time in the NFL. You spent some time with the New England Patriots. What was it like being around Bill Belichick, Tom Brady for a couple years? Uh, you learn attention to detail. Nothing goes unwatched. I kind of relate this organization to the New England Patriots of the really? yeah, attention to detail. Everything you do is being watched, so have to be on your P's and Q's at all times. And similar, like New England, every year the expectation is to win a title. 100%. But you, you like that as a football player. You don't want to go anywhere where, you know, it's all right to be mediocre. You want to go somewhere where you want to be a champion. And that's exactly why you chose to come here? Right. Want to win a championship. It's all about winning the championship. Now, away from football, you like cooking. Yeah, a little bit. But you're a little bit different than the average guy that just likes to cook himself a meal. Coming out of high school as a big football player, you had scholarships to culinary schools. Tell us about that. So we had culinary competitions. And from the competitions, if you win the competition, you get culinary scholarships. So within three years, I was basically the man in the state of Kentucky. <laughs> and then nationally, I won a couple of national competitions. So in three years, I had about 250000 
and scholarships, and I turned them down to play football. And now I'm talking to you today as a Sabercat. If we were to have you to do your number one dish and have it here on Sabercats Weekly, what would that number one dish be? I can cook almost what you asked me to fix. So, but around here, I have some strawberry cupcakes that are very popular. Well, we're going to have to do that here on Sabercats Weekly. Mm, we might have to one day. Well, hey, we appreciate you stopping by. Good luck the rest of the way. I'm glad the boycott is over and you crossed the line <laughs> and, you, and you made it to the show. But honestly, this is going to be a fun year. One, two straight. You got Orlando at home on Saturday night. Good luck on Saturday night and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. This week's offensive player of the game was wide receiver Rod Harper. The Sabercats' Mr. Reliable tallied nine catches for 67 yards and four scores, including an incredible over-the-wall touchdown against the Kiss. Offensive player of the game has been brought to you by Fries.com. What's going on, Sabercat fans? This is Jason Willis, a.k.a. J. Will. This is my second season with the Sabercats, sixth season in the league from the University of Oregon, quack quack, and I'm here to ready to go. I want to get on that podium. That's the first thing on my mind right now is get on that podium, have our bet hold that trophy up, and have us in the background just having a blast. Let's go, Sabercats. The Sabercats Player of the Week has been brought to you by Norton by Symantec. Once again with us here on Sabercats Weekly, the head coach of the Sabercats, Darren Arbett. And coach, I got to ask you, because it looked very strange on television, what was the great turf like down at the pond playing the L.A. Kiss? It was different. I'd never uh, seen anything like that before, and just everything they had going on at the arena when we were warming up, it was so many cameras and, and different stars out there. It, it, it was very interesting. Well, good to get a win, two straight wins, two straight road wins, and now you come back home. But before we talk about Orlando on Saturday night, Rich Wranglin had not only that touchdown catch for 19 yards, but he had three catches. How much can you go to an offensive lineman, or is that something that you got to pick your spots before they start looking for it? If they're not going to take it away, we'll get the ball to Rich Wranglin. Uh, does a nice job catching the ball. Really, he's really been working on that, and uh, you see when he gets it in his hands, he can run a little. Yeah, for a big guy, he can run a little bit, and, and, and the offensive line really has to appreciate that, all of them, to see one of, theirs, the, one of their guys getting in the end zone. Oh, they want it all the time. I, <laughs> they tell us we're not calling it enough. So, uh, but, th but that's what you want as a coach. You want guys who want the ball, who wants to play, and those guys definitely want the football. So the Orlando Predators come to town on Saturday night at 730, and this is a team, not a great defense, but they score a lot of points. Right now they're number one in yards, number two in touchdowns. What do you see with their offense and Jason Boltus, who's really getting his first ever shot to be a full-time starter? Rob Keefe, their head coach, they play hard for him, Chris. They play from start to finish, and they're coming at you the whole time. And no matter what the score is, their demeanor never changes. And they've made some changes. Wide receiver, we look at five guys. When you got uh, three rookies, you got Padden, you got Carr, you got Tompkins. Those are the rookies. And then Solomon, who you saw, they traded for. You saw him in week one. And then Brackens, you saw in week two. So they made some trades. So that's five different wide receivers. Tough scouting that many guys? You know, our, our guys do a good job. Well, we're going to be prepared for this game. But the thing is, and I'm going to say it again, they play really hard. No matter what play they call, they're trying to execute. And when you look at a team that just wants to outscore you, what's that strategy? You know, all teams are different. But what's the strategy when you know they're just coming in and they're gunning it the whole game? You know, we're going to do what we do. Uh, we're going to play good defense. Our offense is definitely making a lot of strides right now and they're heading on the upward slope right now. So we just want to continue to play well. Special teams are playing well right now, and that's all we're concerned about. And I mentioned defensively, they don't have a lot of sacks. They only have three on the year. You have to feel pretty good about this game, knowing how well your offensive line, especially blocked against L.A. We don't worry about sacks. You worry about pressures. If that quarterback is throwing the ball when he doesn't want to throw it, or he's getting knocked down right as he's throwing the football. To me, those things are more important than sacks. You know, one player on offense I want to talk to you about, Rod Harper. What a fantastic game, especially that catch where he goes over the wall in the back of the end zone. You know, he's come on so strong for you the past couple of games. Talk about what he's brought to your offense. Gosh, Rod Harper, he's so solid, Chris. He and Clee, just very spiritual young men, and, and, and they're great for this locker room here. Love having him and Clee on this team, and, 
and Rod, his play, he's just going up right now. He's practicing hard. He's really working at getting better so he can help this football team win. You know, two straight wins on the road. Sometimes when you have a little bit of a struggle at home, talk about how it's good maybe to get away from home, get on the road, a little bonding where the team's together, and winning on the road builds that great confidence. It really does. I mean, they're in the hotel together, we're on the bus together, we're on the plane together. All those things are great, and we're away from our families, and it's just us in those rooms and when we're on the road. Well, Orlando's been in this league a long time. So is San Jose. It's a nice rivalry. They're in town on Saturday night at 730. We'll see you at the arena, Coach, and good luck to you. Hey, thanks, Chris. This Saturday night at 7.30, we got a classic matchup for you. San Jose against the Orlando Predators, who are 5-2 and two on the season. You can hear the game on KMBR 1050 at 7.30. And, of course, next week we'll have all the highlights for you right here on Sabercats Weekly. We'll see you next time. Sabercats Weekly has been brought to you by Dr. Sharma South Bay Orthopedic and Sports Medicine, Casera Clothers, Norton by Symantec, and Fries.com.